An agent from a secret bureau visits an old man who is so destitute that he only has worms to eat. I am here to help you. I am not your enemy. I don't want your help. You have no right to come in here and tell me how to live. None whatsoever. But the agent has no intention of helping the old man. He wants to get rid of him to make society's life easier. You must be a productive citizen. It is the law. It is a crime to do otherwise. The agent persistently tries to relocate the old man to another place, but the man refuses to yield. And if you don't agree to resettlement, I'll have no other choice but to have you arrested. I'm no fool. I know the truth. The stubborn old man retreats to another room and takes decisive actions against the agent. Mr. Hill, are you all right? I'm just Jim Dandy, Mr. Cross. The old man is ready to fight for his freedom until the end, but the bureau agent is not so simple. You little shit! The agent has yet to realize how much he will regret this act of self-defense and never knowing the terrifying truth from the old man. A man named Noah Cross lives in America during a time of famine and drought. He works as an agent for the Bureau of Humanity. Agent Noah Cross, leaving security perimeter A57. Noah's task is to visit inefficient people who are unable to benefit the state and hand them tickets to a colony called New Eden. Noah firmly believes he is saving his wards, but he will be shocked when he learns the truth about the colony. A new life awaits you in New Eden. After an unsuccessful visit to the old man in the slums, Noah returns home to a well-organized city. His boss, named Adam, comes to visit him, already aware of what happened. He is pleased with Noah. You're getting promoted. Doesn't bother you the two men are dead? Adam is not bothered by it. The country's residents lack water and food, so some people's views on the afterlife have changed. Noah recalls that in his childhood, the world was different. Back then, he used to go to Canada to catch fish in a lake full of water. Noah would still love to go there now, but it's very dangerous because the area near the Canadian border is highly irradiated after a nuclear power plant explosion. Radiation contaminated everything, Noah, everything. That's restricted information. Suddenly, Noah remembers that the old man talked about some truth about New Eden. He decides to question Adam about it. Adam just shrugs and claims that the old man was crazy. However, Noah has some uneasy suspicions. Do you ever feel like the authorities are hiding some terrible truth from people? Write your answers in the comments. The next day, Noah visits new candidates for relocation. He stops by their house and looks at photographs of a woman with a baby. It seems that something connects the man to this family. The residents of the house, single mother Rachel Weller and her son Lucas, anxiously await Noah's visit and hope they can stay in their home. If you want to stay on this farm, we have to prove that we can take care of ourselves. So best behavior, please. Rachel reluctantly invites Noah into the house. She provides him with income statements, and Lucas asks why Noah is counting their money and wants to evict them from the house. Shouldn't people with more help those with less? In theory, yes, but in practice, it's a difficult concept to sustain. Do you often help others, or do you believe that everyone should fend for themselves? To stop the boy from asking too many questions, Noah suggests he drink muddy water, but Lucas doesn't give up. He tells about his friend who moved to New Eden, and they haven't heard from him since. The boy doesn't yet realize what really happened to his friend. After analyzing all the data, Noah understands that the Weller family must relocate to New Eden. Their deportation is scheduled for tomorrow. Rachel is not happy about it. She asks for a delay because Lucas has a musical recital tomorrow that he has been preparing for a long time. But Noah believes it's best for Lucas to move as soon as possible. Tell him it's for the best. Noah takes the slap with dignity, even though he could harm Rachel in retribution. While the adults talk, Lucas climbs up to the roof to put a fallen baby bird back in its nest. Suddenly, he slips, falls, and loses consciousness. The adults rush outside, and Noah quickly revives Lucas. For some reason, the Weller family becomes special to Noah. He only leaves them late in the evening, after compiling an unusual report about the Weller case. Delay the deportation of Rachel and Lucas Weller. Take no further action without my consent. But Adam is not satisfied with such a report. He sneaks into Noah's apartment and waits for him there. Adam claims that Noah has no right to cancel the deportation order. The family must leave tomorrow. Noah is disturbed by his boss's firmness. He begins to have more suspicions about New Eden. Noah remembers the old man who knew some truth. 
In his pocket, the agent finds a scrap of paper with the words, Never Surrender. Noah decides to dig deeper. With the help of some acquaintances, he tracks down a man named Irving Ravitch, who possesses secret information about New Eden. Irving works in the Ministry of Defense. His brother and sister-in-law were deported to New Eden three years ago, and they haven't heard from them since. So Irving started gathering information about the supposedly heavenly colony. This information is stored on a flash drive, which Irving hands over to Noah. And I am not in this alone. We could use your help. At home, Noah reviews the information on the flash drive and is horrified. What have we done? Noah immediately goes to Rachel and Lucas. He arrives at the boys' school during his performance. Noah genuinely praises Lucas and drives the family home. Rachel is still suspicious of him since their last meeting, but Noah tries to win her over with coffee, which is almost impossible to find. His generosity touches Rachel, and she starts trusting him. Then Noah openly warns her. You can't stay here. They won't let you. They'll come for you. Noah spends the night in his car near the Weller's house to protect them from bureau representatives if needed. In the morning, he notices movement in the valley and decides to urgently take the mother and son away, but it's already too late. Adam sneaks into the Weller's home and threatens Rachel with a gun. The situation seems hopeless, but suddenly Lucas shoots Adam in the eye with a BB gun. Rachel breaks free, and Noah starts fighting with the villain. To calm the opponents down, Rachel fires a rifle a few times into the air. Soon, other agents from the Bureau of Humanity arrive at the Weller's house, but Noah manages to take the family away. However, his car is not in the best condition for a quick getaway. Fuel tank puncture. Switch to reserve. Reserve tank empty. The fugitives continue their journey, hoping for a better future, driving in an unknown direction. Meanwhile, the bureau agent frees Adam, who was handcuffed to a radiator in the Weller's house. Injured and angry, Adam thirsts for revenge. The fugitives arrive at a gas station, but Noah's card is canceled, and he can't purchase gas. Threatening the attendant with his gun, Noah forces him to give them the gasoline for free. The man doesn't put up much resistance. He believes Noah is a noble family man and decides to help him. Noah takes the gas and drives away with the Wellers, while the gas station attendant waits for the bureau agents and unexpectedly rams them with his car. Adam and his henchmen are forced to return to the city. The fugitives continue their journey, and Rachel is upset about Noah threatening the kind gas station attendant. He had gasoline. We needed it. I did what I had to do. At that moment, Noah realizes how disgusted he is with violence against anyone. Adam returns to the Bureau of Humanity and reports Noah's actions to the leadership. They order Adam to figure out everything and understand what connects Noah to Rachel. The leadership is unaware of the secrets in Noah's past. They only see him as a threat and fear that people will learn the truth about New Eden. Those we've deemed expendable need to believe there's a better life waiting for them. Then the director of the Bureau opens a box sent from New Eden. Among the ashes, he finds a child's tooth and looks at it with satisfaction. What horrors are happening to people in this supposed heavenly colony? The director warns Adam that if he doesn't neutralize Noah, he will end up in New Eden, revealed to be an extermination camp where unproductive citizens are incinerated. Meanwhile, the fugitives stop for a break. Noah gives Lucas a rabbit's foot as a good luck charm. The boy is unaware that it's not just an ordinary talisman. Noah tells them they are heading to a lake in Canada. Lucas is thrilled with the idea, but Rachel doesn't believe that there are any lakes with water left in the world. On the way, Noah meets a local resident and decides to exchange cars with her to confuse the agents. He also asks her how to get to Canada. There are no roads north. Not anymore. You won't get across the border. It turns out that many people have tried to leave but failed. However, Noah is determined not to give up. The woman advises him to seek help from her acquaintance, who lives near the border. Meanwhile, Adam tries to find out why Noah escaped. He locates Irving Rivish and interrogates him in an elevator, threatening harm to his family. Irving can't bear it and reveals the existence of the flash drive with information about New Eden. Adam then lets Irving go home, but his wife and son are no longer alive. Noah and the Welders continue their journey north. Suddenly, their path is blocked by a pickup truck. Two teenagers jump out and grab Lucas. Noah fights them off and notices the father of the teenagers on the hill. What is your business here, stranger? This man is Adolf, the expert on crossing into Canada. Adolf warns that there might not be any lakes in Canada, but that doesn't stop Noah. Hope for a better life still resides within him. Due to a radiation leak near the border, 
Adolf gives the travelers a Geiger counter and iodine tablets that protect from radiation absorption. He then shows them a map and explains that crossing the border is almost impossible. You will go where no one dares to go. Even Adolf himself doesn't know what's at the border, as nobody ventures into the radiation-contaminated territory. Meanwhile, Adam searches Weller's house and finds documents under the name of Amanda Douglas with a photo of Rachel. It turns out that the woman is not who she claims to be, but what happened to the real Rachel? After the conversation with Adolf, the imposter Rachel becomes upset and no longer wants to head north. However, Noah convinces her that it's even more dangerous to stay in the USA. In the morning, Noah and the Wellers resume their journey. Meanwhile, Adam discovers that the real Rachel Weller passed away nine years ago. But why assume the identity of a dead woman? I don't know, Porter. Amanda Douglas was Rachel's neighbor and close friend, but why did Lucas start considering her as his mother? Sensing the lie, Noah asks Rachel to tell him about Lucas's father. The woman gives an evasive answer, stating that Lucas has never seen his father. This revelation stirs strange feelings in Noah. He has grown fond of the boy and starts seeing him as his own son. Soon, the fugitives are detected by a military drone. Noah tries to hide the Wellers but realizes the danger they are in. I tell you to run, you run for your life. You run and you don't look back, you hear me? Noah hopes they weren't noticed, but it's not the case. The drone's footage is transmitted to Adam, and he is determined to continue the pursuit. Bored just sitting in the car, Lucas decides to tell his mother what he learned from Adolf's kids. New Eden is a death camp. It's where millions of people are burnt, turn into ash. The horrifying truth about the dangerous camp in New Eden becomes evident as Noah confirms the existence of the crematoriums he saw on the flash drive. Rachel is horrified by what she hears. After a tense conversation, Noah admits that he decided to save them because he knew the real Rachel Weller, and he is, in fact, Lucas' father. The revelation leaves the company in a tense silence as they continue their journey. Suddenly, they are pursued by bureau agents, but Noah quickly deals with the situation. They take refuge in an abandoned warehouse, and while Noah repairs the car, Lucas goes to the restroom. Inside the restroom, Lucas is ambushed by Adam. It's all fun and games till someone loses an eye. <laughs> Noah rushes to help Lucas, and a shootout ensues between Noah and the other agents. Rachel joins in the firefight, and they manage to escape with Lucas. During a night stop, the imposter Rachel decides to tell her story. She reveals that she was friends with the real Rachel and saved Lucas from being sold during a particularly desperate time. However, a tragic accident occurred during the struggle with the real Rachel. Amanda then assumed Rachel's identity and raised Lucas as her own. Lucas thinks you're his mother. I am his mother. Rachel wants Noah to tell Lucas the truth about being his father, but Noah finds the situation absurd and is not ready for such revelations. They reach a nuclear power plant and their Geiger counter shows that it is free from radiation. Although Lucas experiences a nosebleed, it doesn't seem to be due to radiation. They realize that it is the government tactic to prevent people from leaving the country and keeping them in fear. Meanwhile, Adam prepares for a decisive confrontation with Noah. He must retrieve the flash drive at any cost to prevent the truth about New Eden from being exposed. However, Adam understands that keeping such a secret will be very difficult. You can't kill seven million people and get away with it. Eventually, you'll be found out. As they approach the Canadian border, they encounter a normal radiation level, and Lucas questions why people are frightened by radiation when it's not as dangerous as they were told. The answer is clear, fear is a more effective barrier than walls. The border is within reach, and the fugitives feel close to freedom. However, their car breaks down only a hundred meters away from the border. As they almost cross the border, a bureau agent's car appears next to them. Noah tries to fight back but runs out of ammunition. They run into the woods, holding hands. Adam confronts them, surprised that Noah had the audacity to come so far. Nobody needs to know what you've done here. Just return what you've stolen will redeem your reputation. Adam tries to blackmail Noah into returning the stolen flash drive to protect Noah's reputation. Noah ain't giving up the flash drive and going back to his old life. Instead, he grabs Rachel's hand. Adam fatally shoots her heartlessly. Noah's in shock, begging Adam to spare the kid at least. Adam lets Lucas go, and the boy runs into the woods. Then Noah hands the villain the flash drive, but it's empty. This drives Adam nuts, and he shoots Noah. His soul instantly goes back to his childhood, a moment when Noah was happy. Hearing the gunshot, Lucas comes back and punches Adam with all his strengths, but nobody gets to harm the kid. Cause a sniper takes out the agents from the bushes. They were waiting here to protect Noah, but something went wrong. 
The Canadians who were waiting for No take Lucas to their place. They need the flash drive with the info on New Eden. Surely, Noah figured out how to keep it safe. And that's true because the flash drive was in the Lucky Rabbit's foot all along. Besides the camp plan, there's a video message from Noah on the flash drive where he reveals the truth to people. You may be next. Let the revolution begin. People actively disseminate Noah's video, sparking a revolution against the Bureau. Everyone who's been oppressed and starved for so long heads to the city to overthrow the authorities and civil war begins. Noah is happy in his own way, cause his soul reaches the long-awaited lake. This was the movie The Humanity Bureau. Personally, I don't understand something about this film. Why did the revolution start right after Noah's video appeal? It's weird, cause Noah didn't provide convincing evidence that New Eden is a concentration camp. Sure, there was a crematorium scheme on the flash drive, but anyone could draw that. However, I really like the idea that even the most oppressed society can rebel and overthrow the dictatorship. What do you think about the movie and the ideas it represents? Do you believe that someday there might be times on Earth when wiping out half of humanity would be the only way for our species to survive? Let's discuss this controversial film in the comments.